Thank you, Brian. All right, Brian, if you will, let's begin turning to John chapter 7. John chapter 7. I was told to send the perfect love, the saints in New Caney. John wrote about one of his epistles to you. Brethren in New Caney, uh, think of us and pray for us often. I'm grateful. And then I spoke to Brother Gabe Stoniker a little bit today, and he said, All the brethren in Kingsport pray for us and love us, and he does. And, and you know what? Clay Curtis said the same thing this morning. <laughs> I'm thankful. I like, I like to hear that. All right, John 7. I titled this message, A Soldier's Failed Mission. That's what caught my eye. I was given these eyes. I was given the experience behind these eyes. And that's what caught my eye. That's not a common thing, a soldier, to just give up. Get right to finishing a mission, right to the end of it, the finish line, and go, I'm not going to do this, and turn around and walk away. That's not common. I thought I had a command sergeant major. That's an E-9. Highest enlisted man there is in the Army. And a good man to work for. And there was a black bear up in Alaska that come around where we worked. We called him Tripod. He had three legs. His missing one was front legs. And we talked to Sergeant Major. Hey, man, he's a mountain of a man. Just a, I mean, he's a brute, a kind fella. Easy to work for, but he's just strong. He's done karate his whole life. He's real flexible. Didn't look like he would be. He looked like a tree. I said, Sergeant Major, I bet you can't whip that bear. <laughs> and, and he's, oh, wow. And we went back and forth and teased him, you know. And we said, well, it's only got three legs. And it's just a black bear. It ain't a brown bear. Brown bears are dangerous. Black bears, you've got a chance to wrestle them with, maybe. It's a small one. They ain't that bad. He said, oh, I ain't going to do that. He said, if I was to go whoop that bear, he said, y'all would say it wasn't fair because it only had three legs. <laughs> he was funny, but we planted a seed. There's a little bit of a mission that got him hit back, way back in the back of his head. He thought about it. Well, a couple of weeks later, we were laying there in the grass, 6.30 in the morning doing sit-ups or push-ups or something. Here come old tripod. There's a dumpster right behind where we did their exercises. Sergeant Major saw it. And somebody yelled out, you know, there's a bear. Common occurrence. Sergeant Major took off running. He picked up rocks. He chased that bear up a tree. You ever seen a three-legged bear climb a tree? They can do it quick. He didn't run up a tree. He ran the bear up the tree. In the back of his head, he had a mission. And he wasn't going to give up. He had to fight a bear. They always taught us, they said, if you, if you were to take a town or do something, and, and you're the last one standing, and you run out of bullets, and here comes a tank, you pick up a rock and charge the tank. You don't quit. It, for soldiers, that's what's put in. Good ones. Worthy ones. Worthy soldiers don't quit. There's a mess of them, but the, the ones that the cream rises to the top, and the ones that make it up, they're the worthy ones. They don't quit. I saw this in this text. I saw some soldiers that quit. I hope we can see what just turned them around like it wasn't nothing. That'd be special, wouldn't it? John 7, verse 37. It says, In that last day, the great day of the feast, Jesus stood and cried, saying, If any man thirst, let him come unto me and drink. He that believeth on me, as the Scripture hath said, out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. But this spake he of the Spirit, which they that believe on him should receive, for the Holy Ghost was not yet given, because that Jesus was not yet glorified. Many of the people, therefore, when they heard this saying, said of a truth, This is the prophet. Others said, This is the Christ. But some said, Shall Christ come out of Galilee? Hath not the scripture said that Christ cometh of the seed of David? Out of the town of Bethlehem, where David was, so there was a division among the people because of him. And some of them would have taken him, but no man laid hands on him. No man could. <laughs> there was a great division in the same camp. Now there are some believers here, it tells us early in the chapter, that some believed on him. And some here said, this is the Christ. But they were talking about him, they weren't running to him. They were talking about Him. They weren't, weren't saying, Lord, I thirst. Lord, be with me. But there was a division in the same camp. These folks, they all put aside their differences. They put aside their opinions. They put aside their personal gain, their personal power here in just a short while to crucify our Lord. Nothing's changed 
in this day. If I could get to ear everybody in this county and I said, there is a holy God that rules heaven and earth. Always has ruled, always will. Man is full of sin. We have an inability to please Him. We've offended Him. We're at war with Him. And we have no desire, apart from the Lord doing a work in us, to, to make amends. Not truly. Not on His terms. That salvation is only in the blood of our substitute. God had to provide Himself a lamb. He had to come shed His own blood. And those that He saved, those that were put in His hand before time, those He came and He did save them. He'll not lose a one no matter what. No matter what. The free willers and the reformed, the grace Lutherans, the whatever denomination, you can fill in the blank. They'll take sides together, they'll call you an antinomian, and they'll run you out of town if they can lay their hands on you. Crucify them. They'd kill me if the law wasn't standing in the way. If the Lord didn't establish police officers in this county. Nothing's changed. Verse 45 says, Then came the officers to the chief priests and Pharisees, and they said unto them, Why have you not brought him? We sent you to go get this man. Why didn't you bring him officers? Why didn't you bring him soldiers, warriors? <laughs> they gave a reason. Verse 46, the, officer answer, the officers answered, Never man spake like this man. There's never been. This man that you told us to go fetch, there's never been a man that spake like this man. Never. No one spake like this man. How did Christ speak? I thought, what did He say? How did He say it? That, that made them acknowledge this so fast and get right there to grabbing Him. To go lay hands on him. It was not possible. The Lord didn't allow it. But they were there and they said, uh uh. <laughs> and they went back to their bosses. They went back to their commanders and they said, We didn't finish this mission. You don't know what you did. You don't know who you sent us to get. Never a man spake like this man. How did Christ speak? First, he spoke boldly. He did not mince words. Look up in verse 25. People knew this. His enemies knew this. He said, Then said some of, the Jer some of them of Jerusalem, Is this not he whom they seek to kill? But he ought to keep it down. This is the one they're after. They're after him. Verse 26, But lo, he speaketh boldly. He spoke boldly. And they said nothing to him. Did you hear what he said? He spoke plainly. He spoke boldly. He didn't say, well, maybe you could enter the kingdom of heaven. Well, I think it may be a good idea. No, he spoke boldly. Those with the same heart he has speaks boldly. Those that he sends speak boldly. All around people are wishy-washy because that's who sent them. They could say those things about their God, but that's their God. His servant said, thus saith the Lord. <laughs> On this earth, our Lord spake differently than anyone else had ever had. He spoke to these people in power. His power. He spoke with authority. His authority. I, I have no problem speaking the word of the Lord on His authority. I'm an ambassador. I just tell you what He said. I don't have my own message. I don't have my own agenda. I just represent Him. I just tell you what He said. This is the one that sent, that, uh, sent everybody else. He came on His authority. He came with His power. And he read aloud different. He spoke different than anyone else. And he read aloud different than the normal person. And you know what? His people read aloud his word different too. Because they know him. They know the author. I have a book. of I know the author. I know the man that wrote it. It's at my home. And I know his voice. You ever done that? You read a bulletin article. It'd be by Brother Henry. And you can hear Henry read it. Can't you? You can hear his voice. You see Brother Don wrote an article. You can hear Don in that writing, can't you? You ever jump down at the end and look at the name first so you know how to read it? I ought not do that, but I do sometimes. Get halfway through and say, that don't sound like somebody else. Okay, and I'll start back over. Because we know the one that wrote it. Turn over to Luke chapter 4. I'm thankful that the Lord gifts some men the ability to read the Scriptures out loud. To read something that the Lord's blessed in their hearts. Something that's fresh to them. Something that's alive to them without comment. 
And some say, well, well, now we need to have the sense of the text and we need to have the history behind the text. And Well, rarely, yes. Normally, no. Normally, you don't have to say that. When God blesses a passage to the heart of one of His children and He has them read it, it's read aloud with experience. What a blessing that is to me. What a blessing that is to the Lord's people. You see something sometimes. I love, I'm thankful for my pastor and I'm thankful whenever he reads the scriptures. When he just gets up and read them, reads them to me because he knows what he's talking about. It's, the Lord spoke to him in that. There's emphasis where I may not see it. And I'll say, boy, has it always been worded that way? <laughs> oh, I've never seen it that way. It's the living word and it never gets tiresome to the believer. I wonder if, if some pastors that have a larger congregation said, this evening I'm going to preach on Ephesians 1. Tomorrow evening. I guess I should give you a lead-in time. Tomorrow evening I'm going to preach out of Ephesians 1. I mean, we've heard that a thousand times in the ball game's on. and I'm kind of tired. I had a rough day today. got sunburnt. And I just soon take a nap. I've heard 400 messages out of Ephesians. What about Romans 8? There's there, therefore no condemnation. And we know all things work together for good. I've heard 25 messages on that in the last couple of years. I don't know. What about this? The Lord hath appeared unto me of old, saying, Yea, <laughs> yea, I have loved thee with an everlasting love. Why did he say yea? Lord, do you love me? Oh, I feel dead. Do you love me still, Lord? You promised you love the people. Am I one of your people? And he says, yea. Yea, I've loved you with an everlasting love. Therefore, with loving kindness have I drawn thee. Where'd you get drawn to? To call out and say, Lord, do you love me? <laughs> you get tired of hearing that. Luke 4, you got that? Christ read with authority. The etymology of that word, authority. Where'd that word come from? It comes from the word author. Author, a T. <laughs> one that reads and speaks, one that wrote it. How does the Lord read with authority? He's the one that wrote it. He's the one that wrote it. Verse 16, Luke 4, 16. And he came to Nazareth where he had been brought up. And as was his custom, he went into the synagogue on the Sabbath day and stood up for to read. And there was delivered unto him the book of the prophet Isaiah. And when he had opened the book, he found the place where it was written. You think he could have turned right to it? He didn't, did he? He wouldn't embarrass one of his children. I'd have to fumble to find it. And you know what he did? He looked for it. What kindness. Verse 18, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because He hath anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He hath sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captives, and recovering of the sight to the blind, and to set at liberty them that are bruised, to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. And he closed the book. Short passage, isn't it? He closed the book, and he gave it again to the minister, and sat down. And the eyes of all them that were in the synagogue were fastened on him. And he began to say unto them, This day is the scripture. This scripture fulfilled in your ears, and all that bear him witness, and wondered at the gracious words which proceeded out of his mouth. How did he speak with grace? And they said, Is this not Joseph's son? You know when someone speaks and they mean it. I had a friend growing up, as we were teenagers, he would, we'd talk about our dads. We both had firm, steady men as fathers. And he'd say, you ever get that dad tone? Whenever dad gets his dad tone, <laughs> he doesn't have to yell. He just speaks and he means it. Knock it off. Wake up. Sit down. <laughs> he don't have to yell. He don't have to whip you with tongue. He says it and he means it. And you know it. You know it. Oh, to be like him. Our great shepherd, he was never harsh with his sheep. The religious folks, those big church going fellows, boy, he was harsh with them, but not his own. Not his own. I wish I'd never raised my voice to my children. 
I wish I'd have said, come let us reason together. I wish I was calm. I wish I was tender. You know why people get mad? Why people raise their voice? Because they're losing control of the situation. This man <laughs> was in control all the time. The possibility of him losing control of the situation wasn't there. All the elements of all creation was in his hand. He spoke different. He read different than any man. And he talked different than any man. This is who these soldiers got to, to apprehend. And they said, uh -uh. And they turned around and went back. Turn over to Matthew 7. Matthew chapter 7. <clears throat> you can turn to Matthew 7, but beginning in verse... Uh, Matthew chapter 5, our Lord saw a great multitude and He went up into a mountain and He sat down to preach to them. And He opened His mouth and taught them. He opened His mouth and taught them. It was standing only outside, but He sat. You think we got things backwards nowadays? <laughs> well, we're almost hit it tonight. There'll come a day we're going to turn all this stuff off. I'm going to take that chair. I'm going to put it right there. And I'm just going to talk to you. I pray the Lord's with us when that happens. But our Lord sat down and He taught them. And He gave them the Beatitudes. And He said, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. And then He illustrated His people as salt and as light. Those poor people. <laughs> those poor in spirit. He spoke to them as something they could understand. Do you know what salt is? We know what salt is. Do you know what light is? Yeah, I know what a light is. And he said, you're the salt of the earth. But if the salt had lost its savor, wherewith all it shall be salted. And he said, you're the light of the world. A city is set on a hill cannot be hid. If you've got a light, you put it up on top of a hill, a whole city full of lights, it ain't going to be hid. People's going to know. He told them he came to fulfill the law. He said, think not that I am come to destroy the law or the prophets. I'm not come to destroy it, but to fulfill. He explained to them what the law meant. That law he came to fulfill that we think we have a handle on, he said, if you're angry with your brother without a cause, you've killed him. You've committed murder. He said, if you look at a woman, you've committed adultery already in the heart. It's done. He told them not to swear oaths, but to have all your communication be yea, yea, or nay, nay. <laughs> Don't promise anything. You don't know what tomorrow holds. You've heard that eye for an eye. He said, I tell you, turn the other cheek. Love your enemies. Here's the one speaking to the poor. The one that came to fulfill the law. That knew what the law was because it's his law. He, he had him write it. He explained it to him and he says, now I tell you. That's free from the law. Turn the other cheek. Love your enemies. He said, if you're going to give, Good, but don't let anybody know what you're doing. He said, When thou doest alms, let not thy left hand know what the right hand doeth, that thine alms may be in secret. Why? You giving it to men? No, you're giving to the Lord who you're giving to. And thy Father which seeth in secret himself shall reward thee openly. Christ taught his sheep how to pray. Poor needy sinners. And he said this boldly in front of the hypocrites. He said this in power in front of the hypocrites. He said, When thou prayest, thou shalt not be as the hypocrites are. Standing right there with them, ain't they? For they love to pray. Standing in the synagogues. He sat to preach, didn't he? Standing in the synagogues. And in the corners of the streets, out in public, that they may be seen of me. Verily I say unto you, they have their reward. Oh, man. This guy's cutting to the chase, isn't he? He speaks boldly. He speaks in power. He has authority. And he taught them how to fast. Some people think if they fast, they're going to get closer to the Lord. And the Lord said the fast that He'll accept is one He gives. It took me a long time in my lifetime where I just couldn't eat. Being so miserable, you want something to eat. Uh, and you put it in your mouth and you try chewing and you just can't swallow it. And you chew more and you chew more and you chew more and you can't swallow it. That's a fast the Lord gave. He's bringing somebody down. He said, but when thou... When thou fastest, anoint thine head and wash thy face. Don't you fast and have your face all sunk in and look all sad and pale and say, oh, I've been fasting. He said, you go wash your face, you comb your hair, and you look like somebody that believes God. That's between you and the Lord. It's unto the Lord. That's how the fast is. 
What about laying up treasures? He said, But lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven, where neither moth nor rust doth corrupt, and where thieves do not break in nor steal. For where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. Not on this earth. You're dead to this world. You seek his kingdom. And he said, No man can serve two masters. I'll keep a foot in both pools. You'll drown. <laughs> no, you won't. You serve him or nobody. That's bold, isn't it? He said all these things are more important than what we see. All these things are more important than what we feel. He said, Therefore I say unto you, take no thought for your life, what you shall eat, or what you shall drink, nor yet for your body, what you shall put on. Is not life more than meat? Is not the body than raiment? Now Matthew chapter 7. The Sermon on the Mount continues from chapter 5 to chapter 7. And I want us to just read chapter 7. It's 29 verses. I won't comment much. And you just imagine sitting there, standing there while he said, <laughs> and the Almighty God of heaven and earth in a human body, he spoke these things. He speaks these things to his people. Verse 1, Matthew 7, verse 1. Judge not that ye be not judged. For with what judgment ye judge, ye shall be judged. And with what measure ye meet, it shall be measured to you again. And why beholdest thou the mote that is in thy brother's eye, but consider not the beam that's in thine own eye? Or how wilt thou say to thy brother, Let me pull out the mote out of thine eye, and behold a beam in thy own eye? Thou hypocrite. <laughs> First, cast out the beam of thine own eye, and then shalt thou see clearly to cast out the mote of thy brother's eye. Give not that which is holy unto the dogs, neither cast Ye your pearls before swine, lest they trample them under feet, and turn again and rend you. Ask, and ye shall be given. Seek, and ye shall find. Knock, and it shall be open unto you. For every one that asketh, receiveth. He that seeketh, findeth. And to him that knocketh, it shall be opened. Or what man is there of you, whom if his son asks bread, will he give him a stone? Or if he asks of a fish, will he give him a serpent? Then, being evil, know how to give good gifts unto your children. How much more shall your Father, which is in heaven, give good things unto them to ask? Therefore, all things whatsoever ye would that men should do to you, even do ye, do ye even so to them. For this is the law and the prophets. We we'll learned that growing up. <laughs> Treat others as you want to be treated. Our Lord says that fulfills the law and the prophets. That's the whole kit and the caboodle. Love your neighbor as yourself, is what he's saying. Verse 13, Enter ye into the straight gate, for wide is the gate, and broad is the way that leadeth to destruction. And many there be which go in thereat. That's strong, isn't it? Because straight is the gate, and narrow the way, which leadeth unto life, and few there be that find it. That gate is one man wide. Christ is the gate. He's the way, isn't he? Beware of false prophets, which come unto you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they are ravening, ravening wolves. Ye shall know them by their fruits. Do men gather grapes of thorns or figs of thistles? Even a good tree bringeth forth good fruit, but a corrupt tree bringeth forth evil fruit. A good tree cannot bring forth evil fruit, neither can a corrupt tree bring forth good fruit. Every tree that bringeth not forth good fruit is hewn down and cast into the fire. How could somebody respond to something like that? Lord, give me life. Put your seed in me. Grow your tree and produce your fr fruit through me. You're the branch for the vines. We're attached. We're one with you. Wherefore, by their fruits ye shall know them. Not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven, but he that doeth the will of my Father which is in heaven. He's told us that plainly too, is not he? What is it to do his will? Believe on his Son. Believe on the one he sent. Isaiah told us that too. Verse 22, Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name? Have we not cast out devils in thy name? And in thy name done many wonderful works. We've done great things. We performed miracles and we were preachers. We were bishops. We were elders. 
And then while I profess unto them, verse 23, I never knew you. Depart from me, ye that work iniquity. Therefore, whosoever heareth these sayings of mine, I'll just listen to them, you hear them? Has he spoke to you in power, in authority? Has he come to your heart? <laughs> Therefore, whosoever shall heareth, heareth these sayings of mine and doeth them. He said, my sheep hear my voice, I know them, and they follow me. They follow me. His sheep love his other sheep. His sheep believe his word. His sheep feed on his word. And doeth them, I will liken him unto a wise man which built his house upon a rock. And the rain descended and the floods came and the winds blew and beat upon that house. And it fell not because for it was founded upon a rock. And everyone that heareth these sayings of mine doeth them not. Shall I liken unto a foolish man which built his house upon the sand. And the rain descended the floods came and the wind blew beat upon the house and it fell. And great was the fall of it. How fancy you got to be to preach as Christ preached. Is that plain? He spoke. He said, your daddies, would you give your child a serpent? They ask you for some bread. He spoke to us in terms we could understand. You, you know what houses look like. Would you build one on a rock or would you build one on sand? I want a solid foundation. This is the cleft of the rock speaking to them. Verse 28, and it came to pass when Jesus ended these sayings, the people were astonished at his doctrine. For he taught them as one having authority <laughs> and not as the scribes. Oh, that got me. I laughed. I shouldn't have probably. I felt sorry for him after, but I laughed. This man speaks with authority and not as the scribes. Everyone here has heard scribes speak, haven't they? They drone on and on. Brother Paul Mahan said that, and I got so tickled. We will now turn to 1 Corinthians 13 and read the following verses, and they drone on and on. He said they'd put a fly asleep. <laughs> they talk in circles, and you really can't explain what they said because they likely don't know. Oh, Brother Fortner said that one time. He said if a man's not plain in what he has to say, either he doesn't want folks to know what he thinks, or he doesn't know what he thinks. There's people in this street, real famous people. I've listened to what they had to preach. And if you held a gun to my head and said, tell me in two sentences what they believe, I'd say, I don't know, you're trying to shoot me. I have no idea what they believe. That was They ought to go into politics, man. Like, you talk about talking out both sides of your mouth. Pick something and go with it. That's just common sense in this world, isn't it? Our Lord spoke with authority. He spoke in power, and there was no confusion of what he had to say. When he said, I must be about my father's business, they didn't think, well, well you've got to build a house. You're going to do what Joseph did? No, they knew exactly what he meant. He knows how to speak to the hearts of his people, and I'm thankful. This one who spoke, that read, that talked, like no man has ever spoke, read, or taught before, this is the very same one that said, let there be light. And there was light. Well, if we could, could you imagine sitting down for about 15 years and having the Lord put that in our hearts? He said, let there be light. We don't know what light was. And there was light. When He speaks it, it's so. It's so. Because of who speaks it. Now back in our text, these officers in the temple, the policemen of the Sanhedrin, <laughs> allegedly great soldiers, these were the warriors of God. That was their job, their occupation. They gave up their mission. They had a mission. What was it? Look up in verse 31. John 7, verse 31. It says, And many of the people believed on Him and said, When Christ cometh, will He do more miracles than these which this man doeth, hath done? What they're saying was, that you all are arguing, saying, Well, Christ hasn't come yet. And they said, Well, when this Christ comes, is He going to do something more powerful, more authoritative, more miraculous? And what this man has, this is him. They believed on him. Verse 32, John 7, 32. The Pharisees heard that the people murmured such things concerning him. They started hearing people have nice things to say about him. They started hearing people praise him. They started hearing people bow to him. They're believing on him. Calling out to him, Lord, I'm thirsty. Give me to drink. And the Pharisees and the chief priests sent officers to take him. 
they sent officers to take him. Now look down at verse 45. Then came the officers to the chief priests and the Pharisees. They heard him talk, <laughs> say all these things. And they said unto them, Why have you not brought him? And the officers answered, Never man spake like this man. Then answered them the Pharisees, Are ye also deceived? They didn't say, What happened? Why didn't you bring him back? They didn't ask him, Did you try to get him? Like, does he know jujitsu? Like, how did he get away from it? There's a bunch of one of him. They didn't say, Well, you don't have any bruises on you. You're not bleeding. All of you come back. Didn't you try? No. They just said, Are you also deceived? And here's their question, verse 48. Have any of the rulers or of the Pharisees believed on him? That's their concern. You failed your mission. You just walked away from your mission. And they were so, they weren't mad about that. I'd be mad about that. You get out and do it <laughs> since you do something. Boy, they had a greater concern than that. The people of power have the rulers. That's the first thing they come with the people of power, kingmakers. That's their bosses, isn't it? That's who they rejoice in. That's who they talked about. That's who they, they hung out with. That's who they wanted living on their property. <laughs> the rulers. Or of the Pharisees. Have they believed on him? That's their position. That's their peers, second. Power first, position second. But this people who knoweth not the law, they're cursed. <laughs> They didn't even take a breath, did they? Why ain't he here? They said, are you deceived? Have any of the rulers? Well, what about the Pharisees? Well, those people, now they're self-soothing. Those people that, that's looking at him, they, they're cursed anyway. They don't even know the law. There's probably a bunch of Gentiles sitting down there. What shambles that was in. It's organized religion. That's all it was. It's playing church, making themselves gods. They're seeking, seeking a god. But they're going out to establish their own righteousness, weren't they? Now in the mix of these, the Sanhedrin is 70. There's only 69 of them that was thinking this. There was one there that the Lord had begun to do a work of grace in. And you know, that's how it happens so often. I used to be so jealous of someone that, that was in false religion and they've heard lies their whole life and didn't know and then they heard the truth and right then, whoa, I've been sold a bill of goods. My whole life's been a sham. It's been a lie. That's the truth. I didn't know God. Many times it's gradual. I don't know when the Lord saved me. I don't know when I had life, just as I don't know when I had physical life. I kind of start having some memories about three years old. I'm eating pudding on a, <laughs> pudding on a, a hillside one time when I was real old. But I don't remember the first time I heard it plainly. I remember the first message I remember remembering. I said, that's it. Did I know the Lord before that? I don't know. Sometimes that's a gradual growth. Nicodemus here, about 18 months before, had went to the Lord by night. And now, he didn't just get told something and went back home. Something's happened to this man. We'll see down the road. I'm excited for that. Verse 50 says, Nicodemus saith unto them, he that came to Jesus by night, being one of them. He was one of the Sanhedrin. Doth our law judge any man before it hear him? and know what he doeth. He said, y'all want to kill this man. Let's hear him out. They don't know he's talked to him before. They don't know he's heard this man speak like no man has ever speak, spoke. And they said, what's the law say? Y'all want to stand by the law? You want to play that game? We got to hear him out. Because he thought, if they could hear what he heard. Wouldn't you imagine? That's what I'd think. If you could hear the one that I've heard, you, you're going to have a whole other attitude. He hadn't took sides with the Lord yet, but he'd started. <laughs> he started speaking out. And they answered and said unto him, Art thou of Galilee? Are you of that hillbilly town? Search and look. You go get your Bible. You go sit down and get your Bible. <laughs> we'll take you to church. Nonsense. For out of Galilee ariseth no prophet. You know what? That is wrong. They didn't understand the law. They didn't know God was there in human flesh. And they said, there's no prophet come out of Galilee. Do you know that's just flat wrong? Second Kings 14, it says that Jonas, Jonah, the son of Amittai, the prophet, which was of Geth Helper. And I thought, what city is that? I looked it up. Galilee. Jonah's out of Galilee. 
Where, what am I getting at? This is precious. Matthew 16, verse 1. Turn on Matthew 16. These educated theologians <laughs> who spoke as scribes they had no authority, they had no understanding, they had no power, they weren't sin of God. Misquoting scriptures, and they said, oh, Are you a Galilee too? Search and look, for out of Galilee ariseth no prophet. They spoke on authority, didn't they? Well, they didn't have any. Jonah was from Galilee. Matthew 16, verse 1. The Pharisees also with the Sadducees came and tempting, desired him that he would show them a sign from heaven. And he answered and said unto them, When it is evening, you say, It will be fair weather, for the sky is red. And in the morning it will be foul weather today, for the sky is red and lowering. Oh, ye hypocrites. You can discern the face of the sky, but can ye not discern the sign of the times? A wicked and adulterous generation seeketh after a sign, and there shall be no sign given unto it, but the sign of the prophet Jonas. <laughs> what sign did these guys have? They wouldn't know prophets come out of Galilee. And they said, you better pay attention. The only thing, if, if the Lord said that he left them and departed, if the Lord said the only sign you're going to get is the prophet Jonah. And he left. Well, you give me a Bible right now. That's scrolls back then. Roll that thing out. Well, what was the sign of Jonah? Let's read it. Learn everything we can about this man. You got a concordance? Let's look it up. <laughs> Every place his name is. Let's, let's, let's devote our time. Call, off, call in sick to work tomorrow. We got to find out what this is. And then he gives a warning. Verse 6, Matthew 16, 6. Then Jesus saith unto them, Take heed and beware of the leaven of the Pharisees and of the Sadducees. You watch out for these. You watch out for these that are speaking their opinions and what they think, their heresies, and, and what they feel and what their maybes are. You watch out. They don't speak on the authority of God because they don't tell you what He says. They tell you what they think. So there's leaven there. You better watch out. In our text, there in John 7, it says, <clears throat> verse 53, And every man went unto his own house. Did they run down there where the Lord was and cry out to Him and say, Teach us, Lord. Now they went home. Every one of them. What about Nicodemus? He went home too. He didn't say, Lord, you talked to me 18 months ago. You remember me? <laughs> Will you please tell me something again? Uh, he went home. Chapter 8, verse 1. Jesus went unto the Mount of Olives, and early in the morning He came again to the temple, and all the people came unto Him, and He sat down and taught them. Everyone went home, and He went to work, doing the will of His Father. He was about His Father's business. Never a man spake like this. Never a man read like this. Never a man's taught like this. And never a man's worked like this. Imagine the tables He built. Mm. He's a man, but he's not like other men. Turn over to Hebrews 7 and we'll close. You that thirst, come to him. This is who you need to come to. He's the fountain of living water. <laughs> he's this, that's a, one of the old Jewish uh, historians. They said during these feasts, they had a big rock and they'd take pitchers of water and pour the water onto the rock to symbolize symbolized as a token, as a picture of that rock in the wilderness. And the Lord walked and He said, any man comes to me and thirst, out of his bellies will come rivers of living water. Right in front of him was the smitten rock. We think we can talk people into believing God. He stood right in front of them. He said they burned some candles there. They had some lamps burned. He said, I'm the light of the world. They had the showbread out. And He said, you're going to have to eat my body and drink my blood. Right there he was, speaking with him. Come to him, drink. Hebrews 7, verse 23. And truly, they truly were many priests because they were not suffered to continue by reason of death. The Lord's had a whole lot of preachers out there. And they died. But this man, who spoke like no one else, who read like no one else, who lived like nobody else, the God man, this man, because he continueth forever, he's Almighty God, hath an unchangeable priesthood. Wherefore he is able also to save them to the uttermost that come unto God by him. 
He said, come unto me, all you that labor and are heavy laden, I'll give you rest. He'll save them to the uttermost, seeing he ever liveth to make intercession for them. For such an high priest became us, who was holy, harmless, undefiled, separate from sinners, and made higher than the heavens, who needeth not daily as those high priests to offer up a sacrifice, first for his own sins and then for the people's sins. For he did this once when he offered up himself. This man expects like nobody else. Oh, he died like nobody else. For the law maketh men high priests which have infirmity, but the word of the oath, that covenant of grace, that was established before time. He was made a priest after the order of Melchizedek, which was since the law maketh the Son who was created forevermore. Those men didn't bow to him. Those soldiers. They quit their mission. <laughs> Carnally and spiritually, they failed at both. <laughs> they didn't bow to him. But buddy, they come into contact and there was no discrepancies about who this was. This man's different. This man's different. I pray that each of us, I pray that I don't just read the words of a God. He's revealed to me. It's not just a man that spoke better than any other man. He's the God man. I hope He'd make that for, first and foremost in my mind every day as to who He is. And then, out of my inability and my spite and everything else, when I do see who He is, Lord, put it in me to cling to You. <laughs> Reveal Yourself to me. Allow me to hear You. Allow me to read You. Allow me to be taught of You. And then make me run to You and beg for You to give me water. Beg for You to give me bread. Lord, show me light. Give me faith. Keep me with you. Allow me to read your promises and believe them. I want to, Lord. I believe. Oh, help my unbelief. I pray that for you. <laughs> I pray that for you. It's a special thing, you know, to be around God's people. What a, what a blessing we have. All right, let's pray. Father, thank you for this hour. Lord, thank you for your word, the power of your word. Make it effectual. To our hearts, Lord, speak to us. Make it alive. Allow us to experience that what you say is true. Allow us to rest. Let, allow us to experience rest, Lord. <laughs> allow us to lay down our guns. Make us do these things. Make us cling to Christ. Lord, love us that we know how to love Him. Forgive us for what we are. Be with those that suffer. What a privilege it is to be a child that's chasing, Lord. Because we're children. <laughs> and we're your children. Make us thankful. It's in Christ's name that we ask it. Amen.